Rough and Edges is found under the Stylize category, and this is a great effect for adding some texture to your graphics. I'm gonna just apply it to my logo here and zoom in nice and close so you can see exactly what's happening. By default, it kind of looks just like we're adding a turbulent displace effect, but it's a little bit more intelligent to that because turbulent displace will apply that distortion across the entire image that you apply this to, but Rough and Edges is finding just the edges based on the alpha channel and then applying its distortion to those edges, leaving the inside of your graphics unaffected. And to make that a little bit more clear, let me just add a grid effect to my logo prior to rough and edges, change my blending mode to normal so I can see my logo again, and then add a CC composite effect right after that and change that composite mode to stencil alpha. So without rough and edges on, what I've done is just put a grid within my logo and I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller so we see more detail. And then I'll turn rough and edges on. So with that on and off, you can see that the contents of my logo are not being affected at all, it's just the edges which again is different than say the turbulent displace effect. If I put that out and turn off rough and edges, you can see that that's affecting the entire image regardless of the alpha channel. So that's one big distinction between these two effects, but we have a lot more options with this rough and edges effect to control how it actually looks. So now that we understand it's only affecting the edges, I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of these other effects to get rid of my grid, as well as that turbulent displace. And now let's take a look at these controls. So first of all, we have the edge type and it's set to roughen, but I could change this to lots of different options. We'll take a look at those in just a second. But first, let's just go through these other controls that are universal to the effect. First of all is the border. And you can think of this kind of like the margin into the alpha channel that it's going to affect your image. So the higher that number, the further it's going to eat into the alpha channel and the smaller the number, the less it'll affect it. I'm gonna make that really big so we can see it clearly. And the next option is edge sharpness. If I turn that up, it's going to basically crush the alpha channel, adding a lot more contrast to it so it's sharper. If I turn that all the way down, it gets really blurry and soft. Next up is the fractal influence which is all the way up by default. If I turn this down, it's basically lowering the amount of distortion, just like the amount in the turbulent displace effect. I'm gonna leave that up to one. Next we have scale, which is the scale of that turbulence that is generating the distortion. So if I turn it way down, it's gonna have a lot more detail. If I turn it way up, it'll be much larger distortion. Okay, next is stretch width or height, and this is just like a scale property. If I go in a positive direction, then it's going to get really wide. If I go in a negative direction, it's gonna get really skinny. I'll undo that. Next is the offset, which just shifts that turbulence map around the layer, so you can animate that or position it however you want. You could even link it up with something else using an expression for this point control. So if you wanted it to be moving around based on another layer's movement, you could do that. Next up is complexity. If I zoom in again and dial that back, you can see it gets much simpler. If I increase it, we're gonna have a lot more detail. And that is different than the scale. If I turn the scale way up, you see that we still have a lot of detail because of that complexity. So we can have a really large distortion with a high amount of complexity, or we can have a really tiny distortion with a low level of complexity. So you can play around with those numbers to get something very unique. I'm gonna reset these values. Next up is the evolution, which is just like on a fractal or turbulent noise. It allows you to cycle through that displacement through that fractal map. And if we go into the evolution options, we can also cycle that evolution, which by default will be a loop at every revolution. So if I zero this out and just move up one revolution at a time, my distortion does not change at all because every 360 degrees will loop that distortion. If I change this up to say three, then now it's only going to cycle every three revolutions. So every third cycle will be a complete loop. Finally, we have a random seed to just randomize our turbulence if we need a unique look. All right, I'm gonna reset the entire effect and then go back up to edge type. We've only looked at roughen, but if I change this to the next option, which is roughen color, then we're going to get an edge color option opening up. And if I increase my border, more of that's going to be visible. So it's almost like a stroke that's being applied in addition to the distortion. I'm gonna make this a little bit sharper, increase the complexity a little bit, and then play with that edge sharpness again. So if I turn that up, it kind of makes that border thinner and crisper. And if I turn it down, then it kind of bleeds into the alpha a little bit more. I can obviously change this color to anything I want. By default, it's kind of a rust color, but you can change that to be anything. And all the other controls still apply. 
The next option in the list is cut. And what this will do is use that textured edge as a mat, basically punching out holes where the distortion shows up. So if I switch from roughen back down to cut, you can see that it's basically eating away at the alpha channel rather than eating away and pushing out on certain edges. At certain points with cut, you don't see any texture at all touching that. Whereas on roughen, it goes in and out pretty uniformly. Next up is spiky, and this is just a different fractal noise type. It gives a very different look to the texture. Next up is rusty. So this one as well is only eating away at the alpha channel. It's not pushing anything outside of it. And this maintains a lot more of the original shape. Then there's rusty color, which is the same type of distortion, but it gives us that edge color in addition. Then we have photocopy, which makes the inside of my layer transparent and kind of faded out, as well as giving it a little bit of texture. So we're kind of getting this textured stroke outline view of my logo now. And then finally, photocopy color, this time giving us the option to change the fill color basically within my alpha channel. But those are all the options for rough and edges. It's a very powerful effect with some pretty unique controls. And it's a great effect to know about since you can apply texture to your images while still preserving the details of the contents. But that's everything you need to know about Rough and Edges. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.